So there are human things that we do that make us happy. And there are subhuman or inhuman things that we do that make us unhappy. The problem with the rise in depression, anxiety, and all of these other things is because we're doing too many things that are subhuman or inhuman. And those involve staring at screens all day, sitting still all day, eating filth all day, filling our mind with crap all day, being addicted all day, being distracted all day, not moving enough, not eating human food. So this distinction is very powerful, human versus non-human. A lot of people are like, I get sick when I eat da 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 da. The only thing you need to do is start looking at what human food is. Human things are what evolved with the human architecture over the last however many years so that we can flow with that. This new stuff, this let's go dive into the digital matrix and see how we fit. You know, the, the younger, the middle generation was thrown completely off course. Huge rise in suicide and depression and all this stuff. The younger generation, I think evolutionarily, they're rebelling against this. You'll see if you, if you give a younger kid screen time, ooh, they freak out. They go throw something. They smash something. Similarly with certain kinds of sugar. So when humans start to go off course, some like divine force, some evolutionary power directs them on course, back to the course, either g compassionately, but either gently or harshly. And that's what that is. That's what a lot of disease is. Disease. You've been living outside of alignment with the human architecture and you're being invited back. So a client was stressed recently because he was trying to do a thousand things at once and discontent, civilization and its discontents. That's the Freudian book from the early 20th century by Freud. And the equivalent now is uh, civilization and its digital discontents because for all of these promises, very little is fulfilled. Have you noticed? Like, you can keep in touch with friends and family all over the world. Then why are you lonelier than ever? So Rudolf Steiner called this an Aramonic influence. Araman uh, was a force that could control people through technology. And it was, it was separating from the human essence and having just the words without the emotional, without the facial cues, without the you know, in intonation of voice. And that's why you'll see people scream bloody murder on a Twitter comment when they're really gentle people in person. Aramonic influence. Subhuman. Although that force might say superhuman. <laughs> However, no. Or they might be um, insulted by the word human. To me, human is a beautiful thing. And what we need to do is embrace the pieces of human that allow us to thrive. Plants, trees, certain kinds of music, put that in your office, take a walk after eating, eat human food. That's pretty simple. Now, a lot of times people are suffering and they come to me and they say, hey, I'm really suffering. And I say, well, what are you doing? And they're like, let's not look at that. Just get me out of the suffering. What you're doing is causing the suffering. The suffering is the sowing of the seed you planted some time ago. So start planting a different seed. As Steiner would say too, every thought, everything you do, winds up in the astral realm to then manifest somewhere. So imagine how dark and crazy a place that is. That death body, back to Freud, he came up with the libido, the creative. It was first a sexual force that drove everything in the early 20th century. Then he found it more to be a generative, creative force rather than merely sexual, though including sex under its umbrella. And then later he found that that couldn't explain all human impulses, so there was also Thanatos, this death impulse. And I think it's interesting that that Avengers character is called Thanos because it's, it's a similar root word and he tries to destroy half the universe and it succeeds for a while, etc. And according to Ari Thorson, who's a, a clairvoyant and a follower of Steiner, anthroposophist, veterinarian, healer, the resurrection or the Christ body starts to form and grow in the heart. You, And a lot of spiritual teachings have taught about this. You grow in the heart, you grow in the heart. This is a physical energetic space that continues to grow. It pushes out the Luciferic and the Aramontic entities. You heal your body, your mind, and your spirit. 
Conversely though, the death body starts to root in the gut, in the belly, in the lower centers. And that starts to manifest as disease. And we know this, we know Chinese medicine, they say all disease begins in the gut. And that's um, plausible. Now, these different luciferic and aromatic diseases, I won't go into those now, some manifest in the upper body, some in the lower. The point is, you're, we're building this, this life body. Steiner thought it was related to the Christ force. And you can call it whatever you want. It exists in the heart. Though perhaps if you call it the Christ force, which in Kelantic science is the, uh, comes from a principle out in the cosmos called the Christala. And that's where that came from. And that's some of those energies coming into the human experience to help us support us in our evolution. Um, some people say we don't need support in our evolution. We're human. We're self-sovereign beings. We're willing beings. Um, no, you're not. <laughs> As Gurdjieff said, when someone asked him, what should I do? He said, well, first of all, you can't do anything. The reason you can't do anything is you, because you haven't developed that will inside yourself. In every situation, you're a different person. Something triggers you and you're angry. You're hungry and you're sad. Like someone leaves and you're lonely. <laughs> so you can't really do anything because you're so unstable inside. So first, develop a core, a crux of your being, and then you can do things. Then you can actually have an influence on the world. Until then, you're 99.9% .9 of humanity, which are pieces that are moved by these forces. I'm talking about our harmonic or other. And you're just like, just think of the chessboard. And you're moved here, and then you're moved here. You think you've chosen these things that you're living in and through and for? I don't think you have. <laughs> Maybe there's a glimmer of something you chose that was uh, your dream and now you've let that go because life guided you somewhere else or you're not letting it go because life's guiding you somewhere else and you keep beating yourself up because you haven't done this other thing. Well, you know, cultivate the power, the, the uh, Christ force within you, cultivate a core so that you can be, and by the way, Gurdjieff also thought, or Boris Moryevov writing about Gurdjieff said that he was just merely reciting what was already preserved perfectly in Eastern the Eastern Orthodox Church, which you know exists in Rus Russia, is centered around Mount Athos. There's many books about this, including his three-volume Moryevov's three-volume set called Gnosis. Beautiful, interesting books. Uh, I had some boom awakening experiences looking at certain uh, versions of the diagrams, some that were explaining the law of seven and such. So the point is the life body, yes, cultivate that. What cultivates that is human stuff. Now, hu like a tree is a spiritual thing. It's not just, you don't just hack up the wood and this is a piece of wood and there's leaves and this is mush. That materialistic viewpoint is the death body. Everything you see, hear, feel, everything that happens has a spiritual mirroring connotation, a spiritual double in various other realms. That's what uh, spiritual science anthroposophy and such helps us to realize and it's a very tangible effect i mean there are hundreds of volumes of steiner's lectures however sometimes you read one you're like wow that's completely the opposite of what i thought the world how i thought the world operated and that's how it's designed so death body nourishment is materialism um anger polarity thinking lack of intimacy judgmentalism and over-reliance on technology. And those are what I call the Araman cluster. They all cluster together. Over-reliant on technology, then you're an angry person. So stop doing that. And what, it doesn't mean don't use technology ever. I think I run a few businesses. I use my phone. I use different apps. I like using those. And when I get over-reliant on them, I get grouchy and I get out of balance and I fall away from you know, my family and logic and reason. So, um, that's nourishing the death body. And Steiner thought if you if you built a big enough death body, you'd be reborn in this eighth sphere, which is like a dark version of Earth without the Christ force, without light, without love, without these sorts of things. Um, like what you see, like what you glimpse on Twitter or whatever, <laughs> right? You see glimpses of humanity here. Maybe some people that are too much are living in a VR world with a thing on their face are already there. We just still see the remnants of their body just a thought. I know this seems radical because we're supposed to think that technology will solve every problem and you know 
It probably could if it wasn't mostly used as a control structure. And it can't solve every problem. It can't, it can't solve being human. Although medicines that are all suppressed can really heal things, which can, you can be more human without the influence of the disease in your face, like blinding you. Uh, methylene blue, for instance, like this cheap medicine. There's all kinds of them. I won't go into that here. So if you want to be more happy, train yourself to be happier. If you want to be miserable, continue down the path of misery. Suffering is a choice. Happiness is a choice. As Mathieu Richard wrote in his classic book, Happiness, a Guide to Developing Life's Most Important Skill, he'd notice monks go to visit him. He was a monk in Tibet. And some would be miserable, it's raining, it's miserable here, I hate this weather, I hate this mud. And some would be like skipping across the rocks. Oh, wow, it's beautiful here. Look how fun this skipping across the rocks is. I love the clouds on the mountain. Some would choose to see the positive, some would choose to see the negative. Life body and death body. Do you, do you see how the religion doesn't really matter? They're both monks and one's miserable and one's happy. Because this transcends your religious impulse, whatever it is. And it has to do with how you've trained your mind. So... That's the advice. Stop training yourself to be miserable. Start training yourself to be happy. Replace every negative thought with a happy thought. Stop nourishing the death body. Nourish the life body. How do you do this? You wake up miserable. Well, when you wake up, reframe, go a different direction. When you go to sleep, think of spiritual, think of life body nourishing practices so you can go to sleep, carry that in the dreams. It can root in the unconscious and the subconscious. And then you can grow at night instead of shrinking. Instead of cowering in fear, instead of grinding your teeth about nervousness, worry, disillusionment, <laughs> whatever it is. So that's the thought for the day. And I think some of those discernments might help you. If, if they do, uh, follow the link in the comments to get the guide. And if they don't, move on <laughs> to your life. You're either already happy or you're content to suffer. And that's your choice, free will universe, in the sense that you have, you can do things that you have will. However, once we cultivate will, it's a free will universe. It seems like the nefarious forces are allowed to meddle with us more than the uh, positive forces. That's at least what I sometimes see. And, and with that, along with that, is you are more powerful than you've ever dreamed of, and so am I, and isn't that beautiful? That's why we're such a threat when we start free thinking, oh no! Just thinking freely, shut it down. And remember, shut it down is a digital thing. So if you're not in there, hmm, interesting. <laughs> now I'm in the digital realm now. Hello? Just to reach you here. It's like going into the matrix to get all sorted, messed up, so that I can say, hey, shake you and say, hey, hi, welcome, be human. And you can follow me here, don't follow me, whatever, man. <laughs> I'm just. This is what I'm here in this earth to do, is remind people to be alive. I just had a call with a client. It was very beautiful and inspiring. We, came, we stumbled upon the same things. And in training yourself to be happy, just put the things that make you happy in the calendar. Keep learning what will make you happy and put that in the calendar. The calendar is the map of your future. If, if you're just like, oh yeah, conceptually I figured this out. I'm going to blah, 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 be happy. Well, and then color code your stuff for human, subhuman, inhuman stuff. Do you think you can do that? Like... What color should human be? Maybe blue? I love it. <laughs> and then you won't be caught in this loop, this wheel, this car, this wheel of karma. You're free of that. This, this is wonderful. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to listen. And I hope you can apply some of this. And I'll see you on the other side.